Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about curses again. I did a few videos about curses before. I will link those in the description. Curses is a way to make terminal UIs that you can interact with. Uh, and today we're going to be making a terminal UI which you can interact with using a mouse. So let us jump into that. Okay, so just to give you like a quick demo of like some of the stuff you might be able to do with this, uh, I'm going to show you a program that I wrote for my Switch microcontroller project, uh, just you know, starting to make a, a UI for um, interacting with the Nintendo Switch using a terminal UI. Um, and so this, I was just you know showing a few buttons here, and you know these buttons are clickable, so I can use the mouse to click on them. We're going to be making a much simpler version of this. You'll see, I can click specifically on a button. We're going to show a much much simpler version of this today, uh, and kind of build this from scratch. Uh, Alright, so let's start by opening up a Python file. I'm just going to do the boilerplate that we need to get a Curses app working. Exit main, f main, turn curses.wrapper c main, and we'll have def c main, which is going to take standard screen, uh, curses.curses window, and that's going to return an int. And we're going to import curses. I'm also going to do from future import annotations. That way I can use this type annotation here because uh, this is actually a fake type, so I wouldn't be able to use that normally. Uh, and so let's put a little loop in here while true uh, c equals standard screen dot get wch if c is equal to q. Uh, return zero. Actually, since it's an infinite loop, we can do that. Um, and we'll just put hello, hello world at the top of the screen just to show uh, something. So this is just a basic curses app. Uh, you can see it prints hello, hello world. And if we type anything on the keyboard, it doesn't quit. But if we type Q, it quits. Okay, cool. So we have we have a base, basic curses app set up. Uh, so what I want to do now is introduce you to a few functions that are necessary to work with the mouse as an input. Um, and the first one of those, and I'm just going to go through the documentation to uh, go over that for you. The first of those is mouse mask. So what this does is it enables mouse events, period. Uh, without this, you don't have any mouse events at all. I usually find it's easiest to just enable all mouse events. The easiest way to do that is by just doing standard skr dot mouse mask and using negative one. Uh, so this will say, you know, take take every mouse event and interpret it. Negative one is convenient because it's a, in binary, it's represented by, you know, just a series of ones in two's complement. So we're, there's a whole bunch of mouse flags. I don't know what they are. And <laughs> it's easier to just not think about it and just use negative one. So that's, that's what I do there. Um, Let's actually put an else here, um, and we'll just raise an error uh, in the case where we get some character that we don't expect. So now, uh, oh, it's curses.mouse mask, not standard screen. Right, so some things are on the window, some things are not. Okay, so now if we type Q, it will quit. If we type like the letter A, you'll see we get an assertion error A. And if I click with the mouse, uh, we get this number here. Now this number is on its own isn't that useful, uh, but Curses has a few constants and this one happens to la uh, line up with, uh, I think it's key underscore mouse. Uh, it doesn't actually tell us the value here, um, but we can say LFC equals uh, curses dot key mouse. Then let's just say standard square dot add stir mouse event, uh, and so that'll just print mouse event. Actually, we can do it on the second line. Uh, so now if we run this and we click, uh, an integer is required, got string. Oh yeah, x, y, x. <laughs> and we click, uh, you'll see that we get a mouse event there. Now note that it was a little bit delayed. Um, I usually find this to be a negative. <laughs> I usually like to see my mouse events instantly. Uh, however, there is a way to detect just a click versus an actual, you know, mouse down and mouse up. I usually find it's better to do your own mouse down and mouse up debouncing in software itself and not rely on the built-in curses debouncing. Um, so what I uh, what I do for that 
uh, what is the function? Curses dot mouse interval. Um, so the default value is 200 milliseconds. So that's what that little lag was from when I clicked to when it registered. I usually find it's better to use mouse interval. Set this to zero so it happens instantly. Uh, so then I will do curses dot mouse interval zero. So now, now when this happens, I should get a mouse event immediately. So you'll see when I click, uh, you know, it, it immediately showed up on the screen instead of waiting that 200 milliseconds. Now, uh, this isn't, you know, useful on its own. We know that a mouse event has happened, but we don't know what that mouse event is. Um, you actually have to use a secondary method to retrieve the mouse event, and that is the get mouse. Uh, well, there's unget mouse if you want to put a mouse event into the queue, uh, but you don't have to do that usually. Um, but the event that we want is the get mouse function. And this is going to re uh, retrieve us a five tuple. Uh, it's actually kind of a funny thing about this, which I, I don't know why they did this, um, but there's actually, there's an X and Y coordinate, which makes complete sense. You know, you have a position on the screen, but there's also a Z coordinate. Um, it is currently unused, but I don't see how this would ever be used unless you had like a 3D terminal, uh, which seems impossible to me. Um, but anyway, the... Um, the values of this tuple, uh, the ID is actually, I think, not that useful unless you're dealing with multiple input devices, uh, which I don't know that you will ever have a situation where you'll worry about this. Uh, the most important things for me are X, Y, and B state. B state is the button state um, where you can con uh, compare it against these built-in constants for you. So like button one pressed or button one released or button one clicked or, or things like that. Um, and we're gonna use this to draw a little square on this just to show like where a click happened and then erase it when we're done. Um, so let's let's do that. So uh, we need to use get mouse. So that'll get us ID, which we don't care about, X and Y. Um, and this is actually weird because curses usually does Y then X. I don't know why they picked X then Y for this API, but um, we don't care about Z and we do care about B state equals curses.getMouse. And we have two cases that we really care about, and I'm just gonna care about the, the primary button today. So we're gonna use button one pressed and button one released. And again, we're not gonna get this clicked or double clicked events or triple clicked events. Uh, and this is because we are ignoring the mouse interval. So we're setting the mouse interval to zero. So we're gonna handle button pressed and released ourselves. Now, if you wanted just to handle clicks, uh, you would, you know, either leave the button interval alone um, or, yeah, I guess you would leave the button interval alone and then you would worry about this clicked or double clicked or triple clicked uh, events, but we're gonna be handling pressed and, and released ourselves. Now note there are also some additional constants that you can look at inside this, uh, inside this bit mask to see whether the shift control or alt key are pressed down. So if you like control clicked, that'll send a different event than just normal clicking. So if you need those, you can look at those as well. All right, but we're gonna say if B state uh, bitwise and with curses dot button one pressed, this will say the primary button was clicked on the mouse. Uh, that's our pressed state. Otherwise, I'll have B state and curses.button1 released. This will be our released state. And so we're gonna do some stuff in here if those are the case. So let's say, um, let's see. Uh, let's say pressed equals false and we'll have an X and a, or uh, click X and click uh, Y that are, actually we can just use X and Y. And we're gonna just draw a little a little dot where the where the click happens, uh, so that I can show you that we can record it and respond to it. Now, of course, in your app, you might make buttons or, you know, click on something or I don't know, do something more interesting than this. But I just wanted this to be a simple demo. Okay, so if button one is pressed, we're just gonna set press to true, and we'll write something in our little event loop here to draw on the screen. So we'll say pressed equals true. Uh, we'll also put pressed equals false. And um, yeah, let's draw in our loop here. 
So I'm gonna first do standard screen dot clear. Usually you don't, or is it erase? Usually you don't wanna do this in your loop uh, unless you know that you have to erase the entire screen, uh, but this is a demo, so <laughs> screw it. Uh, click anywhere. Um, and then we'll say if pressed, uh, if pressed, we're going to draw a little thing at this position. So we're gonna do standard screw dot answer. Uh, I don't know, let's just do y, y, and then x minus one, and we're gonna add, I don't know, three x's there. I guess we can do this kind of in a loop for uh, y in range, y minus one, y plus two, uh, y, well, I'm just gonna print a little, a couple triple x's in here. Y, well, that way we can see on the screen where this, this clicking happens. Uh, I think that'll work. Let's try that. Um, okay, so click anywhere. We should be able to click, and you can see that now that I've clicked the mouse, those three X's appear where I clicked. If I release, it should clear them. So you can kind of see, you could click anywhere on the screen and you know register that event and do some logic based on it. Um, and that's pretty much the basics of... Um, of working with the the mouse and curses, so we we talked over a few a few main points here. One is turn on mouse fence. Uh, another is you know disable the mouse interval or keep it if you want the click events. I didn't want the click events. Uh, when you retrieve a character using your get wch function, you'll get a curses key mouse. If it's a mouse event, you'll then retrieve the mouse event using get mouse, and you can use you know the the button states to determine what happened there. Um, and then this is just normal, like, drawing on the screen stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of a, a little example of using the mouse in curses. Uh, hopefully this was interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.